All right, why don't we call this meeting to order. This is a special joint meeting of the City Council and Planning Commission. Uh, Madam, I think it's Deputy City Clerk or Ms. City Clerk, would you like to call roll, please? Let the record show that all council members are present with the exception of Council Member Combs, Council Member Sawyer, and Council Member Tibbetts. And Planning Commission? Uh, Chair Sisko, do, can you just announce who the Planning Commission? See that. Um, yeah, um, all, all of us are here with the exception of Commissioner Duggan and Commissioner Collier. Great, thank you. Do we have any uh, cards, public comment on this item? Okay, first up would be Eris Weaver followed by Judy Kennedy. Oh, there we go. Now am I on? Okay. Good morning. Eris Weaver with the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. Uh, really excited to be hearing all of this conversation about um, rejuvenating and improving downtown. Um, I've already sent you written comments about making the area more bike and pedestrian friendly, and so I'm not going to repeat those. But I want to speak to something else that um, I saw reading through the packet ahead of time with comments from the public about parking, more parking, enough parking, cheaper parking. Um, with the city making a commitment to addressing climate change, and with 30 to 40 percent of greenhouse gas emissions coming from transportation, uh, we need to do everything that we can to get people out of cars. So making walking, riding, and taking the bus safer, cheaper, and more pleasant is the carrot. The stick is making it less convenient and less pleasant to drive a car. You're already on the right track with a lot of the um, varied parking prices to make it uh, encourage people to park elsewhere and make it harder to just come and drive downtown. So I encourage any moving forward in this area to reduce or eliminate parking minimums and not put in free parking because free public parking is basically publicly subsidized storage for private automobiles. Thank you. Thank you. Judy Kennedy. Uh, yes, good morning, um, Mayor Schwendhelm and Council, um, Commissioner um, and Commissioners, Chair, Chair Cisco and Commissioners. Um, I have a short list for you. The First of all, putting the square in Railroad Square. Uh, Lois Fisher and I came up with an idea last fall and brought it to council members um, one by one and to um, the residents, uh, business owners and property owners around Railroad Square and there's been absolutely no um, pushback at all. Um, people are pretty excited about actually having a square in Railroad Square. So I would like to see that um, as a, as a, uh, um, as on, the, on your list of uh, preferred alternatives. Number two, um, it, there's several mentionings in the documents before you about a grocery store at the old Sears um, in the plaza. And I would like to suggest that a locally owned hardware store would be a fantastic complement to a locally owned grocery store um, at, at, that, at that location, since Sears is a two-story building, um, you could do grocery on one and share with a True Value or a Ace Hardware. Number three, there's several options, big options in front of you um, for um, discussion. And a road diet on San Rosa Avenue has been mentioned many times in the um, documents that you have. Now that we have traffic counts at 17,500, which is 20% less than they were 10 years ago, um, um, and the bike and pedestrian master plan has also put, has also prioritized putting um, buffered bike lanes in that area. And the, um, 
Um, and Nancy Adams actually has the money to fund the striping of Santa Rosa Avenue. So I want you to look at the big picture. Um, when you start thinking about um, neighborhood villages, I just want you to know that um, the park and garden sub area, which is the San Rosa Avenue corridor and the surrounding neighborhoods, um, we would like you to put that on the front burner. We have worked to create a neighborhood village with zoning changes already, and we are ready for low-income housing, hotels, neighborhood-friendly retail, and the zoning is in place and ready to go. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judy. Uh, Peter Rumble, followed by Peter Stanley. Good morning, Council and Commission. Um, thanks very much for uh, wanting, uh, thanks very much for moving forward uh, uh, at the timelines that you had proposed originally. I really appreciate that the city is moving expeditiously and aggressively uh, toward uh, completing the plan. Um, I was very heartened to see the uh, various options that are coming forward to you. I think each of them have uh, very strong merit. Uh, and encourage you to, you know, pick and choose uh, the best uh, things that you see in each of those to uh, provide uh, staff to uh, to continue to move expeditiously. Really, really do appreciate how quickly you're moving forward. Uh, critical uh, to the development and the vitality uh, of downtown. We're hearing from developers as well as community members how excited they are. Uh, so just kudos. I expected to comment after the presentation so I could provide something a little bit more meaningful, but um, thank you very much for, for moving ahead. Thank you, Peter. Peter Stanley. Mayor Schwedhelm, uh, Chair Cisco, and members of the Commission and Council. Uh, my name is Peter Stanley. I'm with Archaeologics, downtown business owner, and sat on the Commission when uh, we adopted the station area plan that's in front of you now for amendment. Um, I want to say that there were unintended consequences of that document. There's a lot of things in there that are good, but there are things that were in there that started to constrain development. And I think that what you should be looking at as we go through this process is, is looking at those ability to create a more flexible document as we move forward. I like the idea that the three alternatives give us sort of an entree of um, choices that we can make, and then we can come up with the best development possible for the town, for the city of Santa Rosa. And this is more than just downtown. We're obviously talking about the entire city when we're talking about adding a thousand units of housing, or at least the need for housing, a thousand units of housing. So I, I like alternative one that sort of gets aggressive. Um, it talks about uh, removing height limits on uh, city-owned catalyst sites. Well, I would say that everything in the downtown is a catalyst site, and I think that we need to not constrain um, ourselves in the development potential as we move forward. Uh, alternative two talks to this idea that we can meet all of the density requirements through six stories, and I think that's using policy as a way, um, you know, is using math as a way of uh, uh, documenting policy. Um, here's a little bit of math for the downtown. It's a little over 100 acres in downtown, and if you were to remove streets and circulation and infrastructure elements that really aren't significantly going to change, you're probably looking at around 60 to 70 acres of actual land in the downtown that has potential to create and meet this housing need. Well, if you were to take all of that down and build at 60 to 80 units an acre, you might be able to meet the density um, targets that we're trying to hit. That's unrealistic that we will ever do that. So as you put constraints on development, what you're doing is you're pushing that out. We're gonna start pushing up against the urban growth boundaries. We're gonna start pushing up against the existing um, residential neighborhoods that are around the city. And that's not what we wanted. When we put urban growth boundaries in, we said we were gonna intensify. And as a community, we embraced that idea that we would intensify that development. So I would encourage you, both the commission and the council, to look at this document as something that needs to live on into the future. Innovation is there. It's coming. We are going to be able to build taller than eight floors soon um, and do that cost effectively within this community. So don't constrain the document. Transportation systems are going to change radically over the next 5, 10, 15 years. Don't constrain things by making us build millions of dollars of infrastructure that soon will be obsolete. So let freedom, let staff, they've done a great job of looking at these things, but don't constrain it, leave flexibility in the document so that we as um, purveyors and users of that document can implement it. Thank you. 
Thank you, Peter, and thank you for sharing some of your special day and comments with us today. I appreciate that. Uh, Thomas Ells. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. And thank you as well for entertaining the necessary changes for the downtown. I just wanted to ask, I think, some vital questions. What is available here for downtown residents in comparison to other cities? What distinguishes us? In many cases, they're the same. But what we have is exceptional in regard to community and environment in general, but not downtown. What separates us from our neighboring North Bay cities, besides the fact that they have jobs and dynamism, and the similarity that we have, which is if you look outside from above and you look down, what do you see? You're gonna see the same exact thing as if you were in Los Angeles, is if you if you're in San Francisco, if you're in Emeryville, if you're wherever you are, you don't have exactly the bay to look at. So in that sense, we're, we're, you know, we're not as uh, beneficial for, for residents and for, for those who would work here, who would propose to work here. And so I ask you, what is it that's gonna separate us? It's a, it's a design element, it's a design consideration. What is it that we can do that's, that distinguishes us from every other community, at least in America, as far as I've understood. So I do understand that there's one community in, in Europe that, that uh, entertains very, very special, uh, these design considerations. So I would just ask you to think, maybe it's outside the box, what is it that we can do, which is within our grasp, it's doable, but that distinguishes us entirely from every other community, thank you. Thank you. Any other cards? All right. Um, before Mr. McGlynn introduces this item, just let everyone on the commission and the council know uh, we'll have the presentation up through a lot of the um, background information. We'll stop for any questions. Then after alternative one is discussed, stop for questions. Alternative two, stop for questions. Alternative three, stop for questions, just so you kind of know the pattern. Mr. McGlynn. Yes. Um, item 3.1. Downtown station area specific plan update, phase one summary and alternatives analysis. Jessica Jones presenting. Thank you, uh, good morning, uh, Mayor Schwethelm, members of the council, and Chair Cisco, members of the commission. Um, I am filling in for Patrick Streeter, who is our project manager uh, for this project. He was unexpectedly out of the office this week, so uh, bear with me as I move through his presentation. Um, so we are gonna be going over the downtown stationary specific plan, kind of where we've been and where we're going, um, and as mentioned, the alternatives that have been drafted. So uh, we have just completed phase one of the project, which is our opportunities and constraints portion. And so today's presentation will be pr to provide an update um, and the next steps. Um, and so the next step is moving into phase two, which is the alternatives analysis. And we are looking for feedback from the commission and council, um, as well as other boards, commissions in the community on those um, draft alternatives. Uh, so the comments that we received today will be incorporated along with all the other comments that we received through this process. Um, and they will be formed into a single preferred alternative um, that will come in draft form back to the commission and council for your consideration. Um, so um, as everybody is aware, the existing downtown stationary specific plan was adopted in 2007. It is a 20 year plan that looked out to a horizon of about 2027. Um, that plan anticipated about 3,400 new residential units in the downtown area, as well as about half a million square feet of non-residential floor area. Uh, as you can see in this slide here, um, we are falling far short of what we had anticipated. Um, more than halfway through the planning horizon, um, we've only built about 100 units in our downtown. Um, we're doing a little bit better with the non-residential, but still not meeting the mark. In early 2018, the council made downtown and downtown development a top tier priority. Uh, in response to that, the city applied for and received a grant from the Metropolitan Transportation Commission to update the downtown specific plan. 
The grant funding is um, paying for uh, consultant help for technical assistance with drafting the plan. Um, but because this is a Santa Rosa plan, um, engagement with our community and involvement with community and, and various stakeholders um, is really key to this process. So staff has been working to try and get as many voices to the table as possible, um, holding community workshops, going to local events, meeting with stakeholders and our various boards and commissions. So this is a, a uh, aerial of the plan area. Uh, so it does go beyond what we consider our core downtown. Um, it includes area from College Avenue to the north, um, Highway 12 to the south, uh, Santa Rosa Avenue and Brookwood to the east, and Dutton Avenue to the west, including the Amali Gardens area. So this is the timeline um, for this process. Um, and as was mentioned by one of the speakers, um, we are on a very aggressive timeline. Um, and as mentioned, we just finished wrapping up phase one. We're moving into the alternatives exploration in phase two. Um, the next step will be to put that preferred alternative together and, and put together a draft plan with updated um, policies and prepare the environmental analysis. And we hope to have the final plan to the council um, by the end of 2019. So as I mentioned, um, outreach is key to this process. Um, a project website is up and running. It is plandowntownsr.com. Uh, we have project documents up there on that website. We will continuously update it as we move along through the process. And we also have information on um, events uh, and people can sign up for um, updates to the plan process on that website. We have also established a community advisory committee, which is helping us with our outreach efforts, as well as a technical advisory committee, uh, which we are working with to ensure that uh, the plans that we put forward um, are technically feasible. Uh, we have held our first two community workshops, which were on May 1st and May 4th, um, that were very well attended. And that did wrap up uh, phase one of the process. Um, as part of that, we had um, a very robust online engagement um, that had a lot of online mapping and, and ways for people to provide comments. Um, and then of course, we have been attending uh, various local events throughout the community and continuing to meet with stakeholders. Our first technical advisory committee was held on May 30th, um, and we're, uh, at that time we asked the, uh, the TAC to help us look at um, the proposed alternatives which are before you today. So um, to give a summary of the issues and um, opportunities that uh, we looked at over this first phase of the process, um, uh, there are about 5,500 Santa Rosa residents currently living in our downtown area, which is about 3% of our total population for the city. Um, those residents do tend to be of a younger demographic, um, living alone or with roommates, and are less likely to own a car. It's so about 78% of the people that live in the downtown own a car, while about 94% um, um, own a car living in other areas of the city. Uh, we have about 8,400 jobs in our downtown area, primarily in the retail and hospitality and professional services area. Less than 2% of those people who work in downtown actually live in downtown. About 63% of them are commuting from outside of the city. So based on the background studies that we've done, um, it's looking like the city is going to need to add about 1,000 new housing units in our downtown um, per year to keep up with the demand that we currently have. Uh, we do have a lot of large and vacant um, underutilized sites within the downtown area um, that are available for housing, and that includes some of our city-owned sites um, that are in need of redevelopment. Um, as I mentioned, we have only developed about 100 units in our downtown since the plan was adopted in 2007. Um, so uh, the market for high density housing in the residential um, market in downtown is not currently proven. Um, so uh, there's not much for developers to compare to. Uh, so this is a challenge that we're trying to deal with right now. Uh, we're also trying to look at making a path to development as easy as possible, as, as you are all aware, and this involves um, looking at costs and timelines for gaining permits, um, for streamlining, um, and possibly looking at um, public-private partnerships. 
Uh, we're also, um, the uh, primary market for jobs is in the downtown area is at the lower end of the wage earnings. So we're looking at um, what it would take to create and attract jobs at the higher um, wage level, um, which would entice more housing units. So uh, for building heights, um, the taller buildings, as we're all aware, located in the Courthouse Square area, um, but they do only reach about six stories right now, uh, while the zoning code currently allows for up to 10 stories. Um, the tallest buildings in our city are actually located just outside of this planned boundary area, um, and that is Silvercrest Towers on Montgomery Drive, which is at 10 stories, and Bethlehem Tower on Tupper, which is 14 stories. So in our outreach efforts, um, we've had differing opinions on the, the subject of height and density in our downtown area. Uh, some of the feedback that we've received um, has stated that increasing density and height uh, would incentivize um, turnover and redevelopment of properties in our downtown, um, while others have stated that um, we have significant capacity um, and we're just, we just need to kind of relook at, at the factors of why development isn't happening in our downtown. Uh, connectivity was a major discussion point um, throughout this outreach process, uh, specifically the east-west connectivity between Courthouse Square and Railroad Square. Um, there is a perception of safety concerns trying to get between the two areas, um, even though this is a very short walking distance. Uh, we've also heard support, as you heard um, earlier in the, the um, uh, community comments, uh, we've had heard support for road diets, um, and, the, and our analysis is showing that that could be supported on Mendocino, <clears throat> excuse me, on Mendocino Avenue, Santa Rosa Avenue, and E Street. Um, particularly with the reunification of Courthouse Square, um, we've seen a reduction in traffic uh, moved off of Santa Rosa Avenue and Mendocino Avenue. Um, so there is an opportunity to kind of relook at, at how we're moving um, uh, people throughout that area. So we've also um, heard a lot of feedback on um, the relation to programming for our downtown and what people like to do in our downtown area. Performance venues and food-oriented retail, such as grocery stores and specialty food shops, as well as restaurants, were top picks for, for people that participated. Um, and the leisure and hospitality sector um, that would support those is expected to grow um, by about 21% over the next five years. Okay, so we'll be moving into the project alternatives. Um, so we want to take a moment and ask any questions. Chair Sisko, do you want to start with the Planning Commission? Planning Commissioners, any questions of this part of the report? I just have one, um, Ms. Jones. When we um, had our study session a number of months ago, I thought I understood that there would be a report coming out that was specific to kind of what went wrong, um, how, why we ended up where we are for these 10 years and maybe with some suggestions about how to improve it. it and I think there was gonna be a historic inventory. Are those reports still coming or did I misunderstand that? No, yeah, we, we do have a, an existing conditions and constraints report um, that the consultant has been putting together as well as a um, priority development area or PDA profile um, and um, existing market conditions. Um, and so they're, they're, fin they're being finalized right now. So I hope to have them within the next week or two and they will be put up on our website as soon as we have them. We can notify the commission and council. To each of these alternatives, or will will be be getting one eventually as we try to, to you know create our vision. So those will look at um, what's existing out in our community currently. Um, uh, what we have now is basically what we're going to get for for our draft alternative for the, the three options. Once we pull this together into a single preferred alternative, then we'll do some more robust analysis on what the impacts and implications are to the different um, uh, aspects of, of that preferred alternative. And that'll help us arrive at feasibility of our Correct. choices. Yes. Okay, thanks. That's all I have. Council, any questions? Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 
first and foremost, this is a community visioning exercise. Uh, I keep asking residents, what do they want Santa Rosa to look like and feel like 20 years from now? And that's sort of been the easiest way to, to get people to frame uh, how they give input. Uh, I appreciate in here that that's been the focus. I also noticed that there's discussion about outreach to developers uh, within the community. Is there anything being done to also pull in additional perspectives from developers who historically have stayed away from Santa Rosa? And, and I'm thinking about it within the lens of when the Bay Area Council brought all of those developers from as far away as Colorado to see what was happening in Santa Rosa. How have we captured that and how are we incorporating that? So we're reaching out to as, as many developers and stakeholders and property and all of that that we can. Um, I was part of that tour and was able to, to talk with some of the developers and we've had some conversations um, after the fact. Um, the, the meetings that we've had with uh, developers and stakeholders have included beyond just you know, the, the local ones that have been traditionally developing in our city. Uh, so we are, um, and we're, we're working with our economic development department to make sure that we reach out and, and and get to as many people as we can. Okay. Um, and this obviously, this will bleed through, I think, the three different alternatives, but could you talk a little bit about conversations that the city has, has had with Simon and sort of what options could potentially be available there? I know that there isn't anything concrete yet. Uh, there, there, I mean, we, we shared with Simon, uh, the, I, I went with, um, uh, Assistant City Manager David Guin and Economic Development Manager uh, Raisa De La Rosa, and we presented what, what was taking place downtown. Um, they're evaluating their entire portfolio. They are aware of these conversations. I can't, there's nothing more concrete to, to, to suggest in those conversations at this point. And have they given any opinion on what they personally see as the future of the site for them? If any changes? Uh, no. Okay, I, I would hope we would continue to engage with them as well. We, we do continue to engage with them. Great. Uh, with Bodine announcing that they're moving up to Windsor, has that changed how we've done outreach, uh, particularly around that corner of the, the plan? Uh, not necessarily. Um, the existing plan does call for the uh, Maxwell Court area to redevelop to a, a high density, um, mixed use, multifamily area. Um, two of the alternatives um, that are before you today um, go in that direction. One of them brings it back to a, a more light industrial uh, neighborhood. Um, but you know, it, it, so it's something that's up for discussion. The uh, the existing land use that's in place, as I mentioned, is for high density. We do have a combining district for zoning that has been applied to that neighborhood called Limited Light Industrial, um, and that was uh, put in place a number of years ago to um, help the existing industrial uses that were there to continue to thrive. Um, but it did have a sunset date, which is coming up in. Uh, January of 2020. Um, so that is something that um, the, the Commission and Council should weigh in on and the direction of that uh, and where we want to go. But we do have a member of uh, the neighborhood who is on our Community Advisory Committee and we will be reaching out um, and holding a, a specific meeting for that neighborhood soon. Great. Thank you so much. Council, any additional questions? Ms. Fleming. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and thank you for your presentation and all of the, um, the work that you all have put into it. I have a couple of questions and I'm curious about um, if you could speak to the nature of the outreach that has been done to uh, communities that touch on the downtown area, sta station area specific um, boundaries, because I know that a number of our neighborhoods come very close and it will be affected by this, but are not directly in the boundaries. So uh, we had a special meeting um, for our preservation districts, which included the preservation districts that come right up to it but are not necessarily included. Um, we also have um, our, uh, our community advisory committee is um, really a, a, a great group that we're leaning on to help us with our outreach efforts. Um, and we have members from um, all parts of Santa Rosa on that um, committee. And so it represents um, various demographics, um, various locations throughout the city, even you know visitors that don't live in Santa Rosa, but 
perhaps want to live in Santa Rosa. So um, we're really trying to reach um, everybody in the city because it's everybody's downtown. Um, and so we're, we're doing it that way. Plus, again, as I mentioned, we are attending local events. Um, we've been at Wednesday night markets. Um, we were at the Earth Day celebration at Cinco de Mayo. And so um, we're, we're doing all that to try and reach, uh, again, as many residents that uh, may or may not live or work in the downtown area. Okay, thank you. Um, I know I've seen you at Wednesday Night Market and I've uh, seen Community Outreach, the Department of Community Engagement, and um, the, those um, questionnaires that they give the kids now are really tough. You know, who's the city manager and so forth. So it's no giveaway now. I can see they're serious about this engagement. Um, I'm wondering, have um, transit uh, services along the Mendocino corridor and incre increasing transit services been explored as an option. And the reason I ask that question is because I understand grocery stores wait for rooftops and rooftops wait for services and so forth. And we don't have those services in the downtown core, but we have them very close by. And so I'm curious to know, how, has that been explored and will we be hearing more about that today? Um, so we haven't gotten too in depth in that. You know, again, we're we're just now starting with this um, alternatives phase, and so we will get more in depth into the the specifics of it, including transit. Um, we do have our um, transit staff as part of our technical advisory committee, so we're working with them very closely to make sure that um, that all those issues are are addressed through this plan. Thank you very much. Anything else? Thank you, Jessica. Okay, so um, the three alternatives that we're gonna be going over today, um, as you've probably seen, um, represent um, kind of distinct visions and approaches. Um, we are looking at testing the strategies of each um, and looking at the benefits and the trade-offs um, for each of those and hoping again to create that single preferred alternative. So we are asking for feedback from the Commission and Council today, um, as well as um, we, we've already met with the Design Review Board and Cultural Heritage Board, um, our Technical Advisory Committee and Community Advisory Committee, and then we will be uh, holding a community workshop coming up in the next couple weeks, um, and then again, meeting with stakeholders, um, really asking for uh, feedback on the pros and cons um, and working to identify the best features of each of these alternatives. So we're not looking necessarily to pick one or the other, you know, I like one or I like two, um, but what are the best features of each so that we can take all of those and meld them into one single preferred alternative. It could be that, that we like just one single preferred alternative, but it doesn't need to be that way. Generally what we see is different aspects of each um, get pulled together. So then when we create that draft preferred alternative, we'll bring it back to um, both the commission and the council to see did we get this right? We'll also bring it to the community to ask them, did we get this right, um, to make sure that what we're moving forward with um, is something that is supported by our decision makers and the community. And then of course we'll be meeting with our technical advisory committee to make sure that whatever is developed um, is technically feasible and, and, and can work. So the preferred alternative um, that is developed out of this process will go through its own review, um, including review, as I mentioned, by the Commission and Council and um, all of the other uh, community members and technical advisory committee. Um, the three alternatives, uh, all assume development of approximately 7,000 uh, 7, new residential units in our downtown area, which um, is of course an increase from the anticipated 3,400 units that were anticipated with the existing specific plan. The potential location of the new units, uh, as well as topics such as jobs created, public services, uh, they all vary between the three alternatives. Uh, the other issue that has come up through this process is parking. Um, we are looking for feedback from both the Commission and Council on topics um, such as parking minimums or maximums, new facilities, and parking regulation flexibility. So the first alternative that we're going to look at is uh, the Vibrant Core. Um, with this alternative, it is looking at um, locating the bulk of the new 7,000 units of residential development in the Courthouse Square area. Uh, which would support a shuttle, grocery store, and other amenities uh, in the core of the downtown area. Uh, we would see uh, six-story minimum heights with this alternative with no maximums um, along Third Street between E Street and Morgan. 
uh, and would look to the city on site uh, sites as potential catalyst sites to spur development. Uh, the other areas uh, within the plan area, um, such as uh, Railroad Square, Santa Rosa Avenue, and College Avenue, um, would have densities and heights capped, uh, again, to try and get that core of development in our uh, Courthouse Square area. Um, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is the one alternative that does look at changing the land use for the Maxwell Court area and the Roberts Avenue area from the what's identified in the existing plan right now as higher density mixed use development um, and bringing it back to that uh, service commercial and light industrial use. Uh, we would also be looking at redevelopment of the Sears site at Santa Rosa Plaza to a mixed use and housing uh, and adding a regional performing arts center. Connectivity improvements uh, for this alternative would be centered around uh, reconnecting 4th Street as a multimodal roadway through the plaza and multimodal meaning that it would allow for all modes of transportation, um, vehicle, pedestrians, bikes, uh, and transit. Uh, activity um, would be added under the underpasses through pop-up retail, food sales, performances, and possibly a skate park. Uh, and we would also be looking to add bike and pedestrian improvements along A Street, as well as a fare-free shuttle uh, service between Railroad Square and Courthouse Square. So this slide is illustrating the uh, potential breakout of the residential units and job projections uh, for this alternative. As you can see, uh, we are focusing um, the bulk of the residential units in Courthouse Square. Um, so it's about 4,600 new units in that particular area. Um, and this would also be looking at a potential projection of jobs at about 3,600 new jobs um, for, the, for the area, which would primarily be in the office and uh, service industry. So that takes us to the end of alternative one, if we wanna stop for questions. Hey, Chair Cisco, you wanna start? Yeah, any questions from our commissioners? Yeah, Vice Chair Weeks. Jessica, in the, when you talk about the pathway through the plaza, um, is that a roadway or a pedestrian pathway in this alternative? So for this alternative, it would be a roadway, it would be multimodal, so it would allow for vehicles, bikes, and pedestrians. Yeah. And that is the way it is currently designed in our existing plan, just to be clear. And what's the definition of Greater Courthouse Square? Uh, courthouse Square area is basically is what's shown in kind of the darker brown on this okay. uh, particular slide here. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from commissioners? Um, I have a couple. Um, I didn't see in this presentation, but I saw I think in other materials that uh, Patrick Streeter had um, presented that they're in, in this particular plan for the Maxwell Court area and Roberts Road area, there's going to be like a PDR zoning. Do you, do you recall that or what that, how uh, that's defined? Yeah, so it, it, they, they are identifying a potential proposed new um, zoning district, um, which uh, we wouldn't necessarily be very in favor of. We, we don't generally like to create new zoning districts that are very specific to a very small area of our city. Um, so more than likely what we would see if, if this is the direction that um, uh, that the, the council and commission and the community want to go with, um, you know, perhaps re-looking at our light industry zoning district, which is what was previously identified for these areas, um, and modifying that to create, they were identifying um, creating some maker spaces, making it kind of a, a unique little, not necessarily, not, not, not too much heavy into the, industrial, but more like heavy commercial um, and uh, having spaces like that. But yeah, we would generally shy away from creating a new zoning district just for this specific area. Okay, so that's why that's not in this particular Correct. presentation. And then um, in terms of connectivity, this looks like it does not include the connection of Roberts Road. Has that been eliminated for this particular alternative? 
That's my understanding, yes, and I believe that that's because we have, um, have moved away from that higher density residential, which would need that more of that connection um, to going back to the industrial. Uh, so my understanding um, is that, yeah, this particular alternative does not have that connection. It would just be the, the bicycle and pedestrian connection that currently exists um, through the trail that's there. Okay, thanks. Okay. That's, we're good. Council questions. I have one, this, uh, the brown area, the downtown core, you've got that one leg going out on Third Street. Why is that so isolated versus a larger area? Um, that's an excellent question. I, I don't have a good answer. Um, <laughs> I, might, I believe that this is the courthouse square sub area um, that's currently in our, our existing plan, but I have to go back and look and, and we'll certainly kind of refine this and uh, if it seems like a, an odd uh, piece, then we can relook at it. Okay. And then looking through all the alternatives, you may discuss it in two or three, I might have just missed it, but the, the railroad square making that a square, <laughs> How does that piece or that feature, you just want that feedback at the end or I'm not sure which alternative uh, an interest in that feature or change would fit in? So it's not specifically called out in each uh, or in either of, the, or any of, excuse me, any of the uh, uh, three alternatives, but it is something that um, we have uh, heard from uh, the Rover Square group about um, and our, it, it is something that we will be um, moving forward with um, as on the direction for whether that, you know, putting that, the square in railroad square is something that you would like to see move forward. Okay, so again, process-wise, after you go through all the three alternatives, we see all of it, then we did almost like what your first slide was, the pick and choose, I like, oh you know, this alternative with these additional features. Yes, yeah, and, and that's the other thing is if, you know, we, we're bringing this forward, this is kind of what we have heard throughout this process, um, but if there's something that you thought that you would see in one of these that you don't, or you wish that was in one of these, we, we certainly wanna hear that as well. Okay, Council, any other questions? All right, let's go to two. Okay, uh, so alternative two is our village centers alternative. Uh, this would create a network of interconnected mixed use village centers uh, with its own, each with its own distinct character. High density residential would be spread evenly throughout each of these areas to foster activity centers, uh, specifically around Courthouse Square, the Smart Station, Maxwell Court, uh, as well as the Sebastopol Road and Santa Rosa Avenue corridors. Uh, as you can see with this alternative, both um, as we've talked about earlier, both of the Maxwell Court and Roberts Avenue areas um, would be redeveloped from the existing light industry to the higher density, which is, as I mentioned currently, um, how the, the current uh, specific plan is envisioned. Uh, building heights in this alternative would max out at six stories at each of these locations. Connectivity improvements for alternative two uh, would include providing strong connections between each of the residential areas to transit with specific focus on reconnecting 4th Street as a pedestrian paseo. So with this particular one, it would not have vehicular access, but it would be for bicycles, pedestrians only. Um, and that would be through the uh, Santa Rosa Plaza area. Uh, as well as extending um, Roberts Avenue, um, as was mentioned, so that would would have that um, vehicular connection through Roberts Avenue, um, as well as uh, Donahue Street with multimodal roadway. Road diets in this alternative uh, would include Mendocino Avenue, Santa Rosa Avenue and E Street to add bike lanes and wider sidewalks um, with removal of a vehicle lane. The potential breakout of residential development uh, in this alternative, as I mentioned, it's more spread out um, and uh, uh, the residential development in what is um, currently industrial areas would be retained. Uh, approximately 2,100 new jobs are projected with um, them being primarily in our service industry with about half of the jobs in office and retail and a small piece in light industrial. So that's it for alternative two. Chair Sisko, you want to start with the Planning Commission? Yeah, Commissioners, any questions on Alternative 2? 
and I don't have any on al alternative two either. Council, questions? Ms. Fleming. Yes, I'm curious to know if um, you mentioned that we can uh, go forth with elements of each of the three proposals, so I'll get into that later. I'm curious to know though, um, you know, how how you can help us to weigh the various benefits and uh, costs associated with the, each of these elements and if that will be something that we should discuss as we go along with each piece or if you would prefer to have it at the end. Um, that's a good question. I, you know, I think at this point what we're looking for is kind of the, the pros and cons as, as you see it now. Um, we will do more analysis um, on the preferred alternative to really understand what it all means as we put together that draft preferred alternative. Um, and it will, as I mentioned, come to you in draft form um, with, uh, with analysis to really understand what the implications are um, before we make that selection. So I, does that okay. help? It does help. I just want to be clear, though, that we're looking for pros and cons after we get through through the mayor. Are we looking for that after we get through all three presentations, like you said? Okay, thank you. I'll hold my comments. All righty. See another question. Did you have a comment, Patty? Well, I was just noticing in the, the land use designations for alternative two for the village centers, there is an area that it does have that production distribution and repair. So it's keeping part of Roberts Road industrial and moving housing over unlike yes. it is now. Yeah, and so, and that's why you still see a, a small portion of jobs um, created with this particular plan. But ultimately probably won't be called PDR. Right. Okay, great, thanks. I'm sorry, just as a quick follow-up to the PDR, because I think it's come up a couple of times. The idea of that PDR, this alternative designation, is to what Ms. Jones had referenced, the idea of an alternative version of industrial, so not your classic light industrial that's in the rest of the city, but something maybe that is unique that fits with a downtown environment, because light industrial in general is service shops and auto body repair and things like that. Um, but based on the input from uh, the idea was maybe it's a different version of industrial that's downtown that's a, that's a could be integrated with high density housing. Alternative three. Okay, so alternative three, which is our final alternative, is the transit forward. Um, this would create areas of high density that would be focused along the high frequency transit routes that connect our downtown. Uh, high density residential would focus on Mendocino Avenue between College and Courthouse Square, along Santa Rosa Avenue between Maple and Courthouse Square, and along West Third from Davis to Dutton uh, and Sebastopol Road from Dutton, uh, from Olive to Dutton. With this alternative, uh, similar to alternative two, both Maxwell Court and Roberts Avenue would be redeveloped from the existing light industrial to a higher density residential. Uh, building heights in this alternative would max out at about eight stories, and we would see redevelopment of the transit mall area with a mixed-use residential project um, and an expanded transit center. Uh, and then uh, redevelopment of the Sears site uh, would also be envisioned in this alternative as well as the smart site. So connectivity improvements uh, would include uh, reconfiguring the existing high frequency corridors as multimodal transit opportunity roadways. Uh, and this would include bike and pedestrian improvements um, and um, activation of public areas. We would also see reconnection of 4th Street uh, through the mall, again with a pedestrian paseo, so no vehicular access, as well as connection of uh, the Roberts Avenue um, with a multimodal roadway uh, similar to Alternative 2. Um, new multimodal connections would also be provided through the smart site, um, and there would be the fare-free downtown shuttle uh, established between Courthouse Square and Railroad Square. And then finally, enhancements um, to connections to Santa Rosa Creek and an improved underpass with art and lighting would also be included. So the potential breakout for residential development in this alternative would be more evenly spread uh, than in alternative one, but would again be focusing on our transit corridors. 
There would be approximately 3,000 new jobs uh, projected with this alternative, about half of them in the service industry with the remaining split between office and retail. And, and I will note with this one, uh, there is no um, projected new in industrial jobs with this alternative. So that concludes that. Chair Siska, you want to start? Uh, questions on alternative three? Yeah, Vice Chair Weeks. Jessica, can you explain um, the definition of an enhanced connection to San Rosa Creek and what would that look like? Um, it would, uh, I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I, I think what we would be looking at is, you know, bike and pet improvements um, and really trying to make it a, a, a friendly place for, for people to access the creek. Also, it's the opportunity of the properties along Santa Rosa Creek in that area, um, and if the Sears site expanded south, for example, or um, just there's some surface parking lots there, so the plan would uh, provide policies to actually make something happen there that oriented to the creek as opposed to backing onto it. Yeah, Commissioner Carter, you have a question? Yeah, I was wondering if you could say a little more about um, how Third Street is uh, used in this project. For instance, uh, what are the catalyst projects that might be envisioned for Third Street? And is the configuration of Third Street such that it, it becomes a major element in tying Railroad Square and the Courthouse Square area together? Uh, so Third Street is, let me back up here. Um, actually, I'm going to go all the way back. Oops. Um, so this this uh, map here shows um, some of the sites that were identified for um, potential redevelopment, and, and Third Street is kind of like the core area um, where we would anticipate. Um, getting more of the, the catalyst projects coming through um, to really start redeveloping the downtown area. Um, you know, some of that would be through some of the city-owned properties, through public-private partnership, um, as well as through some other sites that, that we're aware of that um, would be ready for redevelopment. And the catalyst projects are not necessarily housing? Uh, that, that's what we would anticipate, that they would be uh, high density housing and, and uh, with higher building heights. Okay, commissioners, and yeah, Commissioner Krake. We're gonna get snug. Um, so alternatives one and two reference um, height limits, either six stories or none, but alternative three does not. Um, is that just projected to, is it proposed that it would be no height limits? Uh, no, that it, it would have height limits. I'm gonna look through the... So um, in the narrative of the packet that, that went out to you, um, it does indicate um, six to eight stories would be the maximum height in, in for alternative three. Okay, any other questions from commissioners? Okay, and I don't have any. Council, questions? Seeing none. Okay, so just to conclude, I wanted to briefly go over our schedule. Um, so right now, um, as we're talking about, we are going through the uh, development build-out projections and alternatives. Um, we're looking at that through um, June and July. Uh, we went to the Design Review Board and Cultural Heritage Board for a study session. <clears throat> on June 20th and had this uh, a similar conversation. Uh, we also brought the alternatives to our community advisory committee on June 24th. Um, we will be holding our community workshop on June 29th. Uh, and then of course we'll be continuing to attend local events and meeting with stakeholders. And that will take us through the end of July and into August. The uh, Technical Advisory Committee will be uh, considering a draft preferred alternative that comes out of this process uh, in August, and then we will be bringing it to the Commission and Council um, for your consideration uh, in August as well. 
So following all that, as I mentioned, will be once a, a preferred alternative is selected by the council, uh, then we will move forward with the development of policies and environmental analysis on this process, uh, and then hope to have the final product uh, to the council by the end of 2019. And so that concludes my presentation. Thank you for that, Jessica. I have a question for the city attorney. Um, if I so choose, could we open it up for public comment again after this presentation, like now even though it's not on the agenda? Yes, that would be within okay. your discretion. So for members of the public, I'd almost like to treat this as another pop-up event. If you would like to make comments and you haven't already done so on this item, feel free to fill out a card um, and uh, more than happy to hear what your input is. And then Jessica, if you could do me a favor for those of us up here, can you frame the specific questions that you would like feedback on? I know this is general, but you, you mentioned Railroad Square, traffic diets. Can you specifically talk about you'd like feedback from us on these specific features? Yeah, there, there are uh, a few specific features, as you mentioned, that, that we would like feedback on. One of them is parking, um, you know, looking at minimums or maximums um, and how we want to address parking moving forward. Um, we also want to get feedback on the extension of Roberts Avenue. Um, that has been a, a question that has come up over the years on how we're going to address that. The existing plan shows uh, extending Roberts Avenue under Highway 12 with a, a full road, um, and there are some complications with that. Um, so we'd like feedback on that. Also feedback on whether, specifically whether we want to look at changing the Maxwell Court area and the Roberts Avenue area from the existing vision of a um, a, a mixed use high density housing and bring it back to that more industrial or light light industrial and, and uh, commercial uses. Um, we'd like to get your feelings on uh, the road diets that have been discussed um, as well as uh, putting the square in railroad square. So those, those are the ones that are coming to mind right now. And then of course, just you know, general feedback on the alternatives and which features of, of each alternative uh, you prefer. Great. So again, if you're uh, anyone in who wants to make comments to the commission or the council, feel free during your three minutes if you so choose to actually give us some information and input on that too. Uh, do we have any cards? So before we bring it back here, let's hear from members of the public first. And it looks like, Michelle, you're probably going to be up first. Sorry, Dean, I'm giving you 12 things to do at once. There you go. Thank you. My name is Michelle Gervais. I'm Santa Rosa Canners. I can't help but just put my 20-year-old hat on, I mean 20 years ago hat on and with the Rudat days and this is really great to see that these ideas are carrying forward and will get done. I know that the understanding is there and it will get done. On behalf of the Santa Rosa Canners, which owns property along the Santa Rosa Creek and Railroad Square, just three points of clarification that uh, as you incorporate comments into your planning would be great. And I did see them mentioned in one of the alternatives and had to do with connectivity. Um, it'd be great to know what to expect in terms of connectivity through the smart site from third to six. I did see that in, uh, mentioned in alternative three, but in, in whatever comes to be preferred, it'd be great to know if it's West Street or whatever it's going to be called that there is a connection there. Similarly, to know what is to be expected in terms of connectivity to the creek. Reconnecting 4th Street has long been discussed. Good to know what's going to be expected and required. And then just another note, as you look at infrastructure in the downtown, there's a storm drain that runs through there, and it's good to acknowledge what of infrastructure improvements throughout all of downtown or what would need to be improved. Thank you. Great, thank you. And Kristen Kiefer. Good morning, Mayor members of the Planning Commission and honorable members of the Council. Uh, this morning I would like to again commend the efforts and the outreach that has been going on over the past couple of months. This has been great to see the input that has been coming in and the focus on these different areas that have uh, evolved in different ways and how we should be moving forward together. I would like to call out for the opportunity to again revisit the look at 
the conversation around building heights and whether this is looking at current conditions or where we want to be in the future and understanding the opportunity for future technology and resolution of issues such as uh, construction costs and labor costs. Where should we really be going should be driving this document. Uh, I would also like to call for the opportunity to look at uh, opportunity areas, so say sidewalks that aren't wide enough for there to be an outdoor cafe or a projection into the sidewalk. What, what other opportunities do we have to create more places for people to interact? Th these are goals that I would like to see uh, accentuated and featured in this plan. So really hope that we uh, have the opportunity to look at infrastructure as well. You know, as we're preparing this plan, it would, great, it would be great to see that these plans are achievable by developers down the road because of infrastructure that's put into place now. So um, in closing, I would like to be really forward thinking in how we're looking for future opportunities and opportunities to connect with others in places that hopefully we're doing this in the downtown and not online. <laughs> Let's create more people places. Great, thank you. Any cards, Dina? All right, uh, Chair. Oh. Dave Bertelbaugh with the Transportation Land Use Coalition. Uh, I really want to commend the work that's been done on this. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's due, and uh, uh, the two comments that I would make is first, uh, that we need to pay a little bit more attention to uh, the cycling situation. Um, Bicycles are gonna be a big part of the uh, issue as time goes on, particularly with e-bikes, which extend the catchment area for first and last mile to the train uh, from the current three miles to about five. Um, and that's substantial. Uh, the other thing I wanna reiterate is that uh, uh, putting the square back in Railroad Square is really important. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And Zach Berkowitz. Hi. I've uh, been around Santa Rosa for around 15 years and invested and been a property owner for that time and currently involved in a few projects, one of them being uh, trying to build 106 units on Mendocino at 420. One of the things that really catches my eye, and I'm not sure which of the uh, council members caught this, but why did we fail so badly in our projections on um, residential units being built in downtown Santa Rosa? And until you figure that out and solve it, it's really kind of crazy to think that we're gonna build 7,000 units. I mean, and, and the bottom line, after studying this for quite some time, is rents are low in Santa Rosa, and the cost of construction is the same to build here as it is in Emeryville, San Francisco, or Concord. So th there's a big gap, and I, I'm not in favor of raising rents by any means, but w we have an issue here, and until that gets solved, I mean, we used to have redevelopment that would, would come in and solve the gaps here, and, and it took care of, basically it took care of reunifying Courthouse Square as well. Um, so I, I think that issue has to get looked at very thoroughly and figured out before you're gonna get a bunch of developers up here to come and build a bunch of units. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful place, it's a great place to build, but the economics just don't make sense. And that's why the developers haven't built. So I, I think it's something that needs to be addressed. Um, the other thing is the transit mall. I, is there any talk of moving that? So it's just a question. Thank you and keep up the great work. Great, thank you. And is that it? Anyone else interested in addressing the commission or council? All right, Chair Cisco, we wanna go, uh, everyone heard the questions that staff would like to hear and uh, open for the comments. Chair Cisco. Great, um, Commissioner Carter, would you like to give some comments? Sure. Um, I'll. I'll make my comments in the order that you gave us your your list. Uh, with parking, I certainly feel like we shouldn't be looking at increasing uh, parking requirements or allowances. Um, I personally favor a transit 
uh, forward approach to the plan, which would suggest that if we can make transit work, we probably don't need to provide as much storage space for cars. If and when we do uh, build parking, it should be flexible and uh, uh, make itself available for redevelopment for other uses, uh, higher and better uses, as we like to say. Um, I believe the Roberts Avenue extension, while I don't understand completely technically what's uh, at a foot here, I think it's important. I think we are focusing a lot of uh, residential development in the in the Roseland area and increasing uh, connections between Roseland and downtown are very important. Um, Maxwell Court, I think it's, um, when I first moved and I've only lived in Santa Rosa for six years now, I, I thought the area looked uh, ripe for redevelopment in light industrial maker type uses, if, if you will. Uh, I'm not sure what the market forces are that affect that, but it sounds attractive, but I don't think we should give up on housing in the vicinity of, uh, of the smart train. I think it's very important to do dense housing to get smart working as effectively as it can. Um, specific to the transit forward alternative, I'm intrigued by uh, the redevelopment of Third Street, both to the west side of town and in the downtown core area and, and what configuration that might take and how it might play as an alternative to the heart of downtown, which is 4th Street, and, and provide for the kind of intensity we, we need in downtown to make this plan successful. And with that, I'll let my uh, colleagues. Yeah, great, thanks. Commissioner Krepke, comments? Um, yeah, thank you so much for your time and your effort on this and the presentation. Um, my comments uh, regarding parking, um, I agree we shouldn't uh, make more allowances, but we need to be careful because the downtown's for everybody and with decreased parking comes um, decreased uh, usage by people uh, from outside the generally impacted areas. Um, additionally, uh, regarding Maxwell Court, um, I have different viewpoints because I work about an eight iron from there and with the new development proposed on West College and that area and the inability to to expand West College uh, in any way, shape, or form, it, it, it could be an issue. Um, I do need, I do agree we need housing, but I think it's gonna be a little bit more complicated than just building it there. Um, this coming from my experience that all construction and development comes down to traffic and parking. Um, and um, I like a lot of alternative three. I'd get rid of the building heights um, uh, the building height limits with alternative three, I like it more condensed. Um, and uh, uh, I like everything else about that, uh, redeveloping Sears, uh, connecting 4th Street. Um, I mean, I've heard many people say they'd like to see a Santana Row kind of thing on 4th Street going through the mall. Um, so uh, with that, yeah, I think that's all my comments, thank you. If, if I could just clarify quickly, when you say you are in favor of the reconnection of fourth, um, are we, is that for both uh, pedestrian and bikes and vehicles or just pedestrian and bikes? Um, I'd say right now just pedestrians. Commissioner Peterson. Uh, so building off of uh, Commissioner Cisco's earlier question and, and one of the issues raised by the public, I, I feel like going into this a little bit blind without knowing sort of what went wrong, why, why is downtown the way it is. Um, and so without having that report on the decisions that were made in the past and, and the effects that they've had today, I think it's a, it's a little bit difficult to, to uh, pick and choose with any sort of level of specificity. Um, so what I'd like to address is sort of the, my, my general view of, of the options that have been presented and, and the issues raised by the, this specific plan. Um, I think one of the key goals is to avoid making the same mistakes we've made in the past uh, and also really anticipating the future in a, in a meaningful way. And so what, what I mean with that is, you know, the, the elephant in the room is, is the mall. And I, 
any sort of connectivity is going to have to address that decision that was made. Um, but one of the things we can avoid doing is making the same mistake with uh, planning around cars and parking that we've done in the past. I, I don't know that I've ever seen, for instance, any one park on the, the top floor of the 5th or 7th Street garages. Um, I think we've got plenty of adequate parking as is, and I think we need to orient the city away from that. Um, one of the public commenters asked, sort of think about what makes Santa Rosa unique, and I, I think one of those things is the ability to avoid, hopefully, making the same mistakes and taking advantage of the, the natural uh, environment, the fact that the area is flat, that there's a lot of room for connectivity, for getting people out of their cars, biking and walking around, and hopefully also avoiding uh, San Francisco-style sort of economic segregation with uh, or, or only sort of one demographic group coming into downtown. Um, on the specific issues raised by staff, uh, I would be in favor of the square on Railroad Square. I would say the drawings that were, were sent by uh, the public of what it would look like are, are good, but I would, again, get rid of the parking around there, really oriented around pedestrians and bikes. Um, when it comes to parking in general in the downtown station area specific plan, I'm very strongly in favor of reducing or eliminating parking minimums for these kinds of projects. Uh, along the same lines, I think a road diet um, on as many roads as possible would be great, really orienting them to the uh, human scale things, you know. The feedback from the Bicycle Coalition and the Bike and Pedestrian Master Plan. Um, as far as Maxwell Court, uh, Again, it's, it's hard to say without, you know, knowing a little bit more specifically what's gone wrong in the past, but I th my inclination along the same lines as uh, Commissioner Carter would be sort of the mixed-use housing element of it, and um, the same with the Roberts Avenue extension. Without, without sort of the specific pros and cons of, of what we're looking at, it, it would be hard to say one way or the other, but in general, uh, greater connectivity for bikes and pedestrians, at least, um, is something that I'm in favor of. Weeks. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the alternatives and, and pick out the ones, the items that I think should be included. Um, and I'll get to answer the questions as I go through that. Um, so I don't think there should be height limits. Um, I think let the market drive, but that limit should be. If anything, there should be a minimum, not a maximum. Um, I like the idea of active underpasses, um, whichever way I know that was in a couple of the alternatives. Uh, I think Roberts Road should be extended. I like the road diets idea, uh, the redevelopment of the Sears site and the transit mall in whatever way that can occur con and connection to Santa Rosa Creek. Um, putting the square back in Railroad Square, and I agree with Commissioner Peterson about the parking. Um, uh, pedestrian pathway through the mall more than there is now, because there is one, but it's uh, not very attractive or usable. Um, reduce parking minimums. Uh, let's see, where else? Um, and I, I think overall, we need to make sure that there's maximum flexibility in the plan um, so that it's actually a usable document for developers uh, who want to, who want to um, help us reach our goals. So that's it. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to start with Roberts Avenue. This Maybe some of you knew I might. <laughs> and um, that connection is extremely important. And um, I'll, I'll get to uh, kind of my preference for the alternatives, but I want to give a little bit of history about that area. Um, back when the Southwest Area Plan was developed, that, that whole uh, uh, section of Roberts Road from Dutton over to the freeway was designated retail commercial business services. And 
at, I don't know, 20 years ago, at some point, um, the, the Human Services Building was proposed for that site, which was a really grand plan. The property owners, the multiple property owners there uh, came together. There was options to purchase the whole thing to develop this uh, human services building, which was going to serve the county, serve uh, the area, and the housing around Sebastopol Road was gonna make it very walkable to an employment center. Later on, uh, when the general plan update was done, that land use was changed to public institutional to accommodate that, uh, that plan, and it failed. So human services building went away. Ultimately, those landowners came forward and the, the public institutional uh, land use designation was hindering them from getting financing to do improvements to their, their businesses. So they requested a general plan amendment to put it back into industrial, which was done until the, uh, the, the original downtown station area specific plan came forward. And I was on the commission at that time. <laughs> uh, and when that, when that was originally coming forward, the, in the, there was a technical advisory committee that was comprised of a lot of the department, uh, uh, technical departments, as well as board and commission members. And I, along with a number of others, said we really need to include this Roberts Road area in the downtown station area specific plan boundaries because it's key to bringing, had that human services building on forward, that would have been key to bringing downtown and meeting the Roseland area, which now is even more important than it was then with the approval of the Roseland Village to, to make Sebastopol Road connected to downtown. So uh, we asked that that be included in the boundaries, and it was. The vision that ultimately came forward for, for the plan was the transit village um, mixed use. It was all about housing, and that particular plan was all about housing. And I wasn't particularly in favor of that. I thought we were losing an opportunity to have a grander vision for that particular area. At one point, um, some developers that wanted to do a baseball stadium looked at that area. Um, I'm always going, at, at one point, I know when uh, Mr. McGlynn first came on, we had some uh, developers of artists' housing. Go look at Roberts Road, go look at Roberts Road. So, um, in my opinion, that the, the connection of Roberts Road is absolutely critical. I don't know that uh, I'm kind of in favor of alternative one with the more aggressive uh, uh, approach to the density downtown with the flexibility built in, as Mr. Stanley uh, pointed out. Again, I'm disappointed that we don't have that report that said what went wrong. But for that particular area, I really would like to see, and maybe we have to make a new one, a land use designation that puts a star on it and, and to have economic development. If somebody's coming forward, that could be the place, if it was well connected, that you travel through Courthouse Square and you go into the new square and railroad square and you come down to something that's active and vibrant, not necessarily housing, but something like our performance center. Maybe we do a Santa Rosa version of the Barlow. There's a historic building there that is needs to be preserved, the silos. It could be a very interesting pathway from downtown into the Sebastopol Road over to Roseland Village. But I would like to see it as flexible as possible so that somebody with a vision to do something more than just uh, high density housing and certainly more than the industrial businesses that are there now. Um, I'm sure both Mayor Schwedhelm and uh, Council Member Oliveras know how dangerous that area is, how much work the police department has had to do because it's cut off. So we can't afford, even if it's difficult, I really wish the city could 
sort of take on its own CIP program and make that connection in advance of development because it would really aid the area and um, it's an important connection. So I would not support anything that closes that off. And I would really like, um, I would like that particular land use looked at with as expansively as possible, as flexible as possible. You know, if a housing developer came in with a grand idea, that, that would be something too. But I just think it's, it's a lot of underutilized land with landowners that are willing to come together and, and make it a, 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 a big area to develop something that would be remarkable, very helpful and supportive of the immediate courthouse square, but also supportive of getting you down to Spastopol Road into the interesting things that are going to be built there. So that's my Max, my Roberts Road spiel. Um, Maxwell Court, um, I can see it in, in, in retaining its uh, sort of industrial, light industrial place, particularly now that Bodine has moved on, but I, I also can see the case being made for keeping it housing. So as far as how that operates in alternative one, um, those are my feelings on that. Uh, I think, again, I really wish we had the report to understand what went wrong because there's still places downtown. The, uh, the Moore building, which was originally so exciting as a mixed use building with housing on top of retail, the retail was never built. We've had a proposal, if you, it's been a couple of years now, that said let's remodel the retail space into living space, and that hasn't happened. So it's, it's just really hard to know what's going to be feasible, and I don't really want to be responsible for creating a vision that, that isn't feasible. But I do know that what was built, more was built, was the non-residential area. So again, that's my, my case for uh, Roberts Road. Definitely in favor of the road diets um, and the vision of the, the square and road, railroad square. I think the more active and more interesting places we can provide um, for our youth, uh, I just think that that's really, really critical. Um, and all the connectivity issues. So I'd probably pick whatever the most feasible <laughs> uh, elements of anything that connects anything to anywhere or enhances the creek and, and put that in the plan. So that, I think that's it. Great, thank you. Go to council, we'll start on this end, Mr. Oliveras. <laughs> thank you, and thank you. Uh, Chairwoman uh, Cisco, did I mention she's my appointee to the Planning Commission? Sure. Uh, and, and I do agree with her comments related to Roberts and Maxwell Court, but I think looking forward, it's really that flexibility um, and really, really looking long term as far as what we're doing with our, with our downtown planning. Um, so I, I am in support of reducing the uh, parking minimums. Uh, road diets, yes, I think creating more space and places for people where we can make that happen. Uh, putting the square back in Railroad Square, absolutely to continue working with that group and how do we pieces. Uh, we have to have more connectivity uh, between uh, Railroad Square, uh, the downtown core and the Sebastopol Road area as much as possible, especially for pedestrian traffic. So I, I would not support any type of vehicular traffic going through the plaza but more uh, looking at how we get pedestrian access back and forth, uh, including bicycles, and also looking at the changes we make and how we can accommodate other modes of transportation. Uh, besides cars, we have pedestrians, obviously bicycles. The, I, I know back in 2008 or so, we had a pedicab downtown, didn't survive much, very long, but maybe it's time to consider other options like that, bike shares, anything we can do to get people out of cars would be important. Um, and, and also that connectivity to uh, Centers of Creek. I know this is a vision we've had for decades and how we can make that happen and putting more uh, eyes and uses along that creek uh, corridor I think would be very helpful and also very helpful as, as regards to uh, perceptions of safety. Um, and, and, a, and a last comment, and this is no joke, but looking into the future, it's restrooms. 
how do we accommodate restrooms in our court? We're gonna have a lot of people down there. So I think having access to public restrooms is gonna be important in whatever we do. Hey, Mr. Sawyer. Thank you, Mayor. And I agree with the last three speakers. They've all touched on some really important points. I'm, I'm intrigued by um, Chairwoman Cisco's Roberts Road discussion. Uh, never have I um, been so intrigued about it because I've heard so, so many alternatives and so many possibilities, ones that I had never, they came in bits and pieces over time. And to hear them um, articulated uh, in, in such an exciting way, actually. I, I, I'm really intrigued by that. I don't know what the possibilities are. I don't know the expense. I don't know you know, in, any of the um, roadblocks to taking advantage of that area, but I, I am, look forward to hearing more about those possibilities. Um, Mr. Stanley mentioned flexibility in all ways and, and, I, and looking to the future as far as changes in technology. I think it speaks to parking. It speaks to all sorts of things, and I think that flexibility is one of those items that perhaps um, compromise the ability of the last plan to be successful. So I'm, I'm looking for a high level of flexibility. Um, I am not in favor of, of um, creating limits on, on building heights. I think that the market will, will dictate those, that, that, uh, those decisions and uh, limiting uh, those that would come in and, and offer us opportunities as far as building heights, I think should be considered and, and uh, move in the direction of flexibility as opposed to limitations. Um, I would be very curious, well, I'll leave that to the last. Um, as far as road diets, I mean, there was a time when road diets were more co problematic when we had a, the road going right through Courthouse Square. I'd be curious to know uh, what public safety says about certain road diets. There may be issues around some that might be more problematic than others, but I think that uh, we have more opportunities now that we've changed the, the traffic patterns in downtown to consider road diets that were not uh, per particularly um, uh, either possible or popular uh, with certain um, activities like um, fire engines. Um, Maxwell, a railroad square, uh, and definitely would love to see a square back in a railroad square. I think that, or back, uh, getting it uh, in, in place would be um, a all positive, of not only for our visitors, but for um, the employees, a, a, a way to um, gather people together in a real positive way. So I'm definitely in favor of that. Maxwell Court, uh, I would need to know more about the opportunities there and, and whether or not, what would, what would happen if we were to um, change or eliminate the um, light industrial there? It concerns me somewhat. I, mean, I, I, I think that we need to be able to have uh, those opportunities that could be eliminated if we um, moved just to housing in that area. So uh, with, with the new opportunities presented with the, the move, um, of Bodine, I think we have an opportunity to be a little, to be uh, as creative as possible in uh, the future use of that site. Um, I, one, one of the things that I, I am really curious about uh, in, in the narrative that, uh, that was received, it, it speaks to your May 30th meeting um, that the let's see, representatives of city departments, outside agencies, and other technical experts met for technical advisory committee meeting number one. Um, and this is an important piece. The purpose of, this, of that meeting was to consider two potential project alternatives and develop additional items of consideration that should be tested toward preparation of a preferred alternative. That is a mouthful, and I would be very, very curious to uh, all of these these suggestions that might come out of the council or or the public as well, um, having a long list of wants uh, without having a, 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 a the test of, rea of reality um, makes for, um, this puts a lot of questions up in my mind, and I think that I would ver be very interested in, in knowing um, the some of those major challenges to some things that may sound simple to us and may sound simple to the community, but indeed could be um, problematic, difficult, almost perhaps even impossible. 
Um, one of the things that came up uh, in alternative one under, under the Vibrant Core, it, it speaks to activate underpasses with pop-up retail, food sales, performances, and a skate park. Anyone that can turn the Third Street underpass into a, into a pop-up um, retail or food sale area um, deserves a crown. Um, that being able to do that inside of a tunnel um, and, and make it attractive and, and uh, not, not something, I mean, I think almost anyone who knows that space um, avoids it like the plague. So there may be other alternatives, um, areas where we can use some of the overpasses, but um, as, un as, as uh, disappointing as that space is, I think it's, it's <laughs> I don't know if that could ever be used effectively, um, but I'm intrigued by the, by the concept. So I, I think that's, I think, I think I've touched on everything, parking, Roberts, Maxwell, Bellevue Square, road diets, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you Sir. for the work. Ms. Fleming? Yes, thank you again. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go out on a limb here and suggest that uh, a potential, my, my hypothetical, um, my hypothesis for why we didn't get the housing around um, after the 2007 plan has to do with a combination of both recession and policy. So hopefully we can move policy out of the way and just pray that we don't have another recession. Um, I don't know that that second part is gonna work very well, but we can do everything we can on policy front. And let me start by making a statement to anybody who would like to do responsible development in Santa Rosa, please do it. You're very welcome here. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go out of order, but, as, but try to do it as best as I can here. I had the benefit of listening to nearly everybody talk first, so. Um, when it comes to additional parking, um, I'm not in favor of additional parking. I am in favor of looking into a wayfinding program that would help direct folks to parking and use the vast amount of parking that we have in a more efficient and attractive way. I know that our, that Kim Nadeau works really hard on that and I know that our downtown merchants would love to see um, parking utilized in a way that can attract, um, you know, and retain uh, people who want, need to drive into town, although I hope that we can also look into how to attract uh, housing downtown that meets the needs of those folks working in the service sectors and um, <clears throat> so that they don't need to commute into town. I am in favor of road diets and I'm also in favor of additional bike and pedestrian connectivity and I want us to look toward including both the south of Courthouse Square area, um, uh, Sonoma Avenue, further south as well as Mendocino. I'd love to see um, a look at a possibility of a low or no cost shuttle that would run from Bicentennial to um, the, the Smart Train and also have south of A Street be more connected as well to the Smart um, to the smart train because when we do that, what we're gonna find is that people are gonna build downtown because if you had a trolley or a, a not a trolley, but a, a rail, uh, not a rail car, but um, some sort of shuttle that went back and forth all day long between Courthouse Square and Bicentennial, you would pass by the junior college, you would pass by two grocery stores, you would get to Kaiser and there would just be a whole bunch of connectivity and people would build downtown and then eventually we would need and be able to afford a grocery store based on the roofs downtown. Um, so let's see. Um, one of the things that I've sad to hear not mentioned very much outside of a skate park and Chair Cisco's remarks are the considerations for family and youth in these plans. I believe that a downtown that's vibrant and connected is gonna have and attract families and children. When I come downtown, my daughter asked me what we're doing here. And she said, are we going to work? And I'll say, no, we're gonna go meet some friends. But she doesn't feel like that there's a place here for her. And so when we look at, um, <clears throat> at features that would attract families and children. I, I really do, I am in favor of a square in Railroad Square, and um, I'm gonna condition those remarks in a moment, but what would be really important to me is to see a place that not accommodates families with children, but invites families with children. And without um, good wayfinding, without good public restrooms that are, that are made available and clear to folks, these are difficult things to do. 
Um, one of the things that I would like to see considered in the courthouse, um, not the courthouse, the railroad square would be the wall-to-wall -wall, um, version where we make um, it more open and attractive for um, pedestrians and bikes. I am interested in the connectivity on 4th Street. I'm very interested in the connectivity on 4th Street. I'm not swayed that it needs to accommodate vehicle traffic, although I would be open to hearing the benefits of that, and I would also be open to having an allowance for uh, a free or no low-fee shuttle, as well as emergency vehicle travel through that area. But I, I do think that we should do everything we can to have um, a safe and designated bike lane and that we should do everything we can to have pedestrians be safe. The other reason why I'm not 100% sold on the idea of vehicle traffic outside of public service vehicles is that although the, the mall is the elephant in the room, one of the few, if only, benefits of the mall is that it has allowed Railroad Square and Courthouse Square areas to develop with their own cultural and retail features that are somewhat unique to them. And I think that if we had uh, foot traffic and bicycle traffic and perhaps public transit that we could help to create connectivity with maintaining the independent flavor of both both squares and both sides. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, I am in favor of reducing minimums on uh, parking requirements and, like I said, better utilizing the ton of parking that we have. Um, <clears throat> On Roberts um, and Maxwell, I defer to Chair Cisco's thoughts on, on those things, but again, um, I would just say that if there is gonna be light industrial, that we try to make it mixed use and approachable for pedestrians, families, and, and folks who wanna live and work in the same area. Um, Third Street, um, Mr. Sawyer made some very pointed comments about it. One of the things that I've always thought would be really great on 3rd Street would be a permanent light installation or some other kind of artwork that uh, was difficult to destroy and lit the area and made it attractive for people to be there, unattractive for people to sleep there, and um, generally safer uh, at a, and a fairly low cost investment for the city. Um, I don't know if anybody rec remembers uh, O'Hare Airport in the late 80s and early 90s. I haven't been there recently, but they had, at least as a kid, they had these what are probably super tacky looking installations now, but when I was a child, it was so cool to walk through um, O'Hare Airport. My parents probably weren't as entertained, but at any rate, uh, lighting can do a lot, um, and it can be done in, a, in an artsy way. I'd love to see as much public art as possible. Let's see here. Um, I'm not in favor of height limits on buildings. I am in favor of, um, especially within the downtown core. I do believe that if we're gonna build in the historic district and in anywhere that there's a neighborhood that we need to have uh, height limits, not height limits, we need, to have, we need to rely on our planning commission to do the great job that they do and consider the character and our design review board to consider the character of the neighborhoods and so forth, but I, I know that um, when we have height limits that uh, it just doesn't pencil for all developers and I think that Santa Rosa has done a very good job of saying no when we don't want something, so let's not say no in our policy, let's say no on um, if somebody wants to build a, that type of a tower in a place that's inappropriate to it, I think we should address it at that point. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to do whatever we can to uh, have the people who work downtown be able to afford to live downtown and to see a good mix of, of work um, options for people so that people can afford to live downtown. And then, um, I'll just leave with this. Anything we can do that makes it more pedestrian friendly and more family friendly is going to make the square and our downtown a better place for everyone. And a lot of the challenges that we see through lack of connectivity and through primarily automobile-based transit, I believe can be addressed through bike and pedestrian and public, public um, transit. Anyway, I'm sure I missed a lot and um, Everybody did a great job, so I'll, I'll pass it on. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> uh, I am in particular interested in a blend between the vibrant core uh, alternative one and the village centers alternative two. I think we've talked a lot from this council's dais about the need to invest in our downtown and to put housing where we would like to see people be. And also the added economic benefit to the city of creating that higher density in your urban core. But I think we also do a disservice to the city if we ignore that Santa Rosa is first and foremost a city of pocket neighborhoods. And in particular where it comes to our historic districts, the folks who live in there or who have uh, understand the value, both cultural, historic, and economic, that those provide to our community. What I'd like to see is a blend where we are focused on our housing downtown while also creating distinctive gateways into those historic neighborhoods that helps foster uh, an integration of historic resources into what we're trying to do in Santa Rosa. Each of our historic districts do have their own particular culture. Uh, they can sometimes have shared features. They have their own issues that they have. And I think that if there was a way for us to strike that appropriate balance, it would help us to answer the question of how we add housing units while we are surrounded by historic structures uh, that represent where the city has been. Uh, I was watching the joint meeting between the Design Review Board and the Cultural Heritage Board and the vice chair brought up in particular Santa Rosa Avenue and how it used to actually be South Main Street. And to me, that's when I think 20 years into the future of Santa Rosa, what I wanna see is Santa Rosa Avenue being that main street that leads into our downtown that has the arts district on one side of it and a historic district on another side of it that each have their own culture, their own flavor and their own creativity. And that we as a city don't get in the way of people being creative in those spaces. I do want to see the uh, Santa Rosa Avenue corridor plan implemented. Actually come up through that core into our neighborhoods. Uh, I want to see our downtown, uh, particularly 4th Street, become more pedestrian and bicycle oriented. Uh, a pathway through the mall to me is a minimum uh, I've spoken at length before about wanting to see an open air mall concept. And in fact, we've talked about our P3. I actually would not be opposed to the city and the county looking at how we repurpose parts of the mall to create that civic center as well. If it's gonna be the barrier and the centerpiece of the city, uh, which the mall is at the moment, then we should be looking at all of our options on how we can, can fix that. Uh, I am not in favor of cars being able to drive down 4th Street from Courthouse Square until railroad, into Railroad Square. Uh, I think uh, for that pedestrian and bicycle connectivity, it's vital that people feel safe. And currently that's one of the biggest problems with Third Street, particularly how you come through. Uh, Third Street, yes, is dark. Yes, there's nothing there. But in my experience, uh, both as a bicycle, bicyclist and also talking to the bicycle community, it's actually the uphill that's the problem, is you've got a nice downhill where you're less worried, but as you come up and you slow down while cars are trying to take that right-hand turn, uh, that's where it really becomes a struggle for them. And creating a connection for bicycles and pedestrians that isn't reliant on duck and prey to get across, I think is really important for the future of our downtown. I'm a huge fan of the square and railroad square concept. Uh, I'd like to see that implemented. I'm not sure I'm there on eliminating the parking around it because of the policy implications that it has for both the neighbors who would bear the brunt of folks taking the smart train parking in their neighborhoods, as well as people trying to avoid taking the smart train when that is going to be an important feature of our downtown and the future of our city as well. I wanna put people on the smart train while also not impacting the folks who live right around the community. And we're already seeing that even with parking spaces uh, that are there. I wanna be very clear when we talk about parking minimums that we're actually talking about approval of housing units in the downtown and making sure that we are lowering the minimums for those uh, in order to help get those projects off the ground. What we don't typically talk about is the city's role in this area of creating additional parking spaces, whether it's building up at our parking garages to ease the burden on the housing that's being produced. 
I actually would take, uh, if I had my way, I would take some of our parking structures, add a couple of stories up to them, and lower the overall parking minimums that are required for housing developers to produce to put those units there. They could then lease some of those spaces, or folks could do month-to-month -month leases if that's where they wanted to park, if they wanted to have their car. But as was noted in the report, many folks living in downtown uh, are actually far less likely to have a vehicle than if they live elsewhere. Uh, as it comes to uh, the LIL uh, overlay for the Maxwell Court, uh, just as a little bit of a refresher for the public and as a reminder, about three years ago we had that discussion about what the future of Maxwell Court was going to look like. And that was put into place particularly around an understanding that Bodine was not going anywhere anytime soon and that that asphalt plant being there was going to hamper the possibility of doing housing production and that we should provide some level of economic activity in that region up until a point where Bodine was ready to move. We've hit that. Uh, and when this comes before the council in early 2020, I will not be voting in favor of retaining that LIL district, and I am really not in favor of us changing this designation back to an industrial use when for close to a decade, the neighbors have been organizing and pushing and trying to create housing in that region. Uh, they will riot if now that they finally have an opportunity with Bodine moving, we change it on them again and put a different type of compatible use there when we've been promising them for years that we are going to provide them with housing. Roberts Road, the chair has me convinced and I don't want her to throw down. Uh, and then I'll stop with this. I do want to emphasize, oh, actually, uh, Third Street, uh, I am all for seeing what people can do with pop-up retail. I'm not sure that a skate park is going to be the most appropriate there. Again, I don't know how people would use that, but I do recognize uh, that our downtown doesn't have something for young families to be there. Uh, one of our school board members actually sent me a, a picture of a wall climbing installation that was in the East Bay that was very minimal in terms of its footprint, but it had kids actually playing on it while their parents were in their square or were downtown and were shopping. Providing something for families to do in downtown I think will be a key, and much of the feedback that I've received from neighbors is that they want to see some form of a music venue or some type of an entertainment venue that they can bring their kids to while they're doing something like sitting on a patio drinking a beer. Uh, I want to see the Sears site redeveloped. A grocery store or a hardware store uh, sound great to me. Uh, yes to free uh, public transit in our downtown, and in particular, Sonoma County Transportation Authority uh, has had conversations and will be looking at uh, an OLLI, an automatic uh, shuttle, drives itself uh, through your, your uh, downtown core. Doesn't really work that well when you have a lot of traffic. So again, going back to the needing to create connectivity east to west. Uh, again, closing with just providing a little bit of flexibility so that developers, whether they are from here or that broader reach that I talked about before, making sure that we're bringing in best practices uh, from across the country, are allowed a level of creativity to create in our downtown what we as a community have put forward as a vision. Thank you for those comments. Okay, the last comments now. Uh, so for me, um, alternative one is the key to this whole thing, a vibrant core. That's what this council or previous councils had talked about when we reunited the square. We're trying to make that vibrant downtown. So that really spoke to me. Uh, no height limitations. We need as much flexibility as we can because we do not know the specific one magic bullet that's going to generate all of these uh, wishes that we've been hearing. Um, I am in favor of the 4th Street going through the mall uh, from the bicycle bicycle and pedestrian perspective, not vehicle traffic. Um, regarding Maxwell Court, again, Chair Sisko nails it, um, that in Roberts, uh, but I'm also like the Vice Mayor, uh, mixed use is the way can, I want to keep that consistent on Maxwell Court. Regarding the road diets, I'm a big favor of them on Mendo, San Rose Avenue, and E Street. Um, I get, I remember when we had some discussions about this years ago with a uh, former fire chief, and there were some concerns about, you know, can ladder one get through there? So obviously, public safety is the number one priority, but I would envision, you know, the type of bike lanes where bikes are next to pedestrians and cars are next to cars. Uh, widen those sidewalks, 
really make it a pedestrian, bicycle-friendly downtown, because I think that will attract a lot of the different businesses, and people won't mind parking in, let's say, Fifth Street Garage if it's a pleasant either bike ride or walk to get to, to some of these other establishments in our downtown. I think that those will go hand in hand. I also am in favor of those enhanced connections to Santa Rosa Creek, but not at the expense of the um, reality of being able to build something. But how do you work those in together? Um, I am, you know, I know Mr. Sawyer made some comments about Third Street. I remember those council discussions. If you recall what it was before we did enhance it, I think one of our former colleagues said it's like putting lipstick on a pig. I beg to differ then. Uh, it's, it, it's made huge imp improvements. I think we've taken that next step just on Third Street. I know we have a ways to go on that, but I think it can be done if we just get creative with that. Uh, let's see, road diets in Railroad Square, big fan of actually having uh, some sort of a square in the middle of the square versus a parking lot. Um, I agree with the Vice Mayor about parking implications for the study is needed, but making Railroad Square a square I think will be huge. And lastly, I'm big in favor of a uh, some sort of trackless trolley, what that might look like, but incorporating that in the plan, I think it blends a lot of the things that we're trying to do with climate action, transportation, I think that would really blend it well together. And with that, Steph, do you have any questions for, regarding the feedback? Are there any unanswered questions that you might have of the Planning Commission or the City Council? Uh, no, not at this time. I just really appreciate everybody's very detailed comments. This is going to be extremely helpful. Great. Thank you so much for the work. I know we're uh, progressing towards our ultimate solution. So I will adjourn this special meeting of the Planning Commission City Council, and we'll readjourn in approximately 15 minutes for our next study session. Thank <laughs> you.